Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service this Sunday morning. We'll start with a word of prayer, but first to say it's good to see everybody again and see all your faces on, on Zoom as we gather together to worship. As we gather, let us uh, pray that uh, God will be with us. Holy Lord, the God that hears our prayers, you have said that you will be present whenever two or three gather in your name. We welcome your presence and grace in our lives. We ask that you manifest your glory today and shine your light on us. Through your light, may we illuminate the lives of those around us. As we feel your presence in worship today, May our knowledge of your divine mysteries continue to grow and change our lives together. Now we're going to sing the song, Jesus is the name we honour, after which Mark will lead us in our service. the meeting. to you all. 
it's good to be with you this morning and um, it's good to be looking at uh, a different passage from scripture which we'll do later um so let's pray just to gather our us together before god let's pray father god we thank you that we have jesus as a name to honor a name to worship a name to be drawn to and we thank that you gave us jesus your son to be our sal salvation our savior and the one who we want to share with others. So Lord, as we worship you this morning, would you draw us close to you? And would you enable us to learn more of you and your love? So that we could share that love with others in a world of need. Thank you, Lord, that you gather us as one from our different places, our different situations, and that we can focus on you, that you might bless us. We pray in Jesus' name and offer now the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah and it's chapter 56 just a few verses a message to God's people Israel that it's not just Israel itself who will be blessed this is what the Lord says be just and fair to all do what is right and good for I am coming soon to rescue you and to display my righteousness among you. I will also bless the foreigners who commit themselves to the Lord, who serve him and love his name, who worship him and do not desecrate the Sabbath day of rest, and who hold fast to my covenant. I will bring them to my holy mountain of Jerusalem and fill them with joy in my house of prayer. I'll accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices because my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. For the sovereign Lord who brings back the outcasts of Israel says, I will bring others too besides my people Israel. Amen. So let's sing once more. And we're going to sing all my days, beautiful Saviour.
join the meeting. Let's worship all my days. All my days, I will sing the song of gladness. Give my praise to the fountain. Trevor now brings a reading from Matthew 15. Thank you, Trevor. The reading is Matthew chapter 15 and verses 21 to 28. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. For my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples 
urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, That's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath the master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And a daughter was instantly healed. Thank you, Trevor. Well, quite an unusual passage, that one, that story of the Canaanite woman's faith and the interaction with Jesus. The reading from Isaiah earlier and that reading from Matthew come from the lectionary, which has been selected for uh, this, uh, this Sunday. I've been following the lectionary, the four of us who've been preaching regularly. And I wouldn't have chosen this passage because it's quite difficult, but it's interesting just to wrestle with issues and with words and with stories that you don't fully understand. And I have to confess, I don't fully understand all that is said here. What does Jesus mean by saying he was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel? And looking at all the translations I've found, there's no ambiguity there. That's exactly what he says. And why does he take his disciples to the north, to Tyre and Sidon, outside Israel, to a part of uh, the country only just south of Beirut? Why does he go there if the message and the ministry is for Israel only? So we look at this interaction with this woman who wanted her daughter healed, and we look at Jesus' response and the disciples' response, and we wonder what does this mean for us today? Jesus is primarily, yes, to minister to Israel. And there's only a few examples of him uh, interacting and healing and helping Gentiles. There's this story from Matthew 15, and there's the centurion whose servant was healed um, in Matthew 8. There's also Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4. People in particular situations, people of particular faith who, because of their exceptional faith, catch Jesus' attention. But I think this is a message, an example of Jesus taking his disciples to somewhere different and enabling a lesson to be learned. And of course, as Jesus' disciples today, we too can learn from this story. The people of Israel are a special nation, a chosen race, chosen by God. God called out from the nations as the rest of the world is called. And I think that in parallel to us as a church today. God's blessing is with the church, with the Christian community in particular, but he doesn't exclude others from his blessing. And I think the lesson for me in this passage is it's our responsibility as the chosen people of God today to draw their attention to the blessings that Jesus can offer. 
not actually to do what the disciples did in that story and dismiss this woman as hell. Can you, Jesus, can you just get rid of her? She's bothering us. But to invite them in and invite Jesus to minister to them. And this ministry to the nations, uh, Isaiah talks about the nations being blessed. If they come to God and respect his ways, this ministry to the nations, I think, is something which is one of the primary roles of the church today. We are a small minority, some would say an isolated minority, as Israel were in biblical times. But rather than being fearful of the nations, of those who aren't in this sheepfold of the kingdom, we should be inviting them in and inviting them in to be blessed by Jesus. In my ministry, after I left the church at Bilsden, Alison and I went to see our friends in Latvia and we went to a service and I spoke at a service in, in Latvia, a small gathering, and one of the elders there came to me afterwards and I said, I think your ministry is going to be to the nations. And this made us think, we wondered whether we were called to go somewhere abroad to bring the gospel. But actually what God intended was for me to become uh, the hospital chaplain and to encourage others who weren't Christians. And many people misunderstand the role of a chaplain. It is primarily to those who actually aren't believers or who are away from their faith, perhaps from childhood. People with great need, people who are quite lonely often. And to me, that was the nations, people beyond the sheepfold of God's people, people who are in particular need in a particular time. And my ministry was to the nations in that sense, to people who wouldn't normally consider themselves to be wanting a prayer, wanting a word of comfort, wanting some of that type of ministry of of comfort and I think in today's times when we are faced with so many people in need remotely or otherwise the church might want to just look beyond its four walls to a needy world and we'll be praying for a needy world in a minute the message in this story is that this woman of great faith breaks the barrier of the, the barrier that divides Jews and Gentiles. And if we have faith, we might break the barrier between church and the rest of the world and see a greater blessing for, for many. One of those disciples was Peter. And he writes in his first letter these wonderful words of encouragement, but are words of commission too, from chapter two of his first book. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Shall we pray? Father God, we struggle sometimes with some of the stories that Jesus Seems to, act, react, seems to act in an irrational way, in a way we don't understand. But we thank you that you can give us a message, a message of hope, a message of mission to a world beyond the four walls of our church. 
we ask you to bless us as we reflect on what this means to us today. Thank you for blessing us as your chosen people and giving us a special ministry, each one of us. In his name we pray. Amen. So our next song, Beauty for Brokenness, from Graham Kendrick. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair, Lord, in the suffering. This is our prayer Bread for the children Justice, joy, peace Sunrise to sunset Your kingdom increase Shelter for fragile lives Cure for their ills Work for the craftsmen Trade for the skills, land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak, voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion. Change your love 
we come to a time of prayers of intercession, prayers for the world. That song reminds us and those who could see the images behind the words, those images remind us of what we need to pray for in this world of ours. So let us come, let us think of those things, let us pray that we will be able to bring God's words to his world. But we are confident of God's care and we're confident that we are be, will be helped by the Holy Spirit as we pray for the church, the world and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, as Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people. Help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities and town, and for those who need your healing, especially those in our community suffering from coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation, Methodists and Baptists together, grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the young people who have received A-level results and those still awaiting results of other examinations. In these times of uncertainty, we pray especially for those whose results seem to be unjust. O oh Lord, we pray that you will uphold those who are disappointed and enable those in authority, authority to put aside pride and enable right to prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our final song is Lord, 
for the year. come to our final prayer. As usual, we ask that uh, everyone unmutes themselves so that uh, we can uh, say the grace together. Bless us with love, joy, peace and gladness. Bless us spiritually, financially and also with good health. Keep us safe, O loving Lord. Those among us who lack wisdom, bless with knowledge. Those who are weak, bless with strength. Shower with energy those who are weary. Those who are blind, bless with sight. And those who are burdened, set completely free. Now, let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining with us in our service. We have uh, one or two notices uh, this morning. Lois, you sent an email out about uh, gathering quite a lot of money and sending it off to Christian Aid. Can you just give a little explanation there? Um, yes, we've we've got rid of all the plants that have been organising and bringing that money, um, and so we've sent off a little over a thousand pounds. So that really is just about the amount we might have raised if we had had. So um, thank you to everybody for, for, for making it happen, even though we couldn't have the coffee and cake. So thank you very much. Thank you. Lois, did um, you say a thousand pounds? Yes, one thousand thirty-six pounds. Wow. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, 
there are Methodist services next Sunday. Trevor, you wanted to say just a short word? Yeah. Just to mention that the sort of third trial of Methodist services will be taking place at St Andrew's Methodist Church next Sunday at half past nine and eleven o'clock. Uh, the previous ones, numbers haven't been that great, so if there is anybody that hasn't been before that, that would like to come again, then if you can contact me ideally by the end of tomorrow then I can send the numbers in from Kingsort on Tuesday. It was good that uh, last week Paul and Richard joined us so uh, don't think this is just for Methodists. If there are any Baptists that uh, want to come along please feel welcome to uh, to let me know. Thank you. Okay thank you. There will be our usual Zoom service next Sunday morning and I will be bringing the message next Sunday and we will be having our normal prayer meetings on Monday, Wednesday and Friday this week. Are there any other notices anybody uh, wants to uh, remind us of this morning? Okay then. In that case, thank you everybody for coming along. Uh, it was good to see you Bernadette. Um, we didn't get a Thank chance you. to say hello to you before the service because uh, uh, we started very promptly today and you joined us as we were starting so uh, apologies for that but uh, it was good that That's you joined right. us today. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I did. It's good to see everybody else but let us now just sort of uh, give each other greetings for the day uh, yeah. before we go to do whatever we're going to do for the rest yeah. of this uh, lovely Sunday. Thank okay. you, everybody. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.